I'm I printed off a bunch of pictures off the web that I've gotten over the years uh, of horses and stuff like that in different positions. Uh, even an old picture of a uh, a warrior sitting on the back of a horse. I think this is a southern uh, tribe, Pueblo or something like that. And uh, I printed out uh, the pictures both in color and in black and white as you can see. I like the black and white because if you look at the color you can't see as much detail as you can in the uh, black and white. And I can uh, set the uh, contrast and shadows and all that stuff up so that I can actually get a better view and shape of the muscles than I can with a color photograph. Now this is a picture I took uh, oh, about 2002, in the summer of 2002, uh, probably around June. And uh, we did a, I did a outdoor play for a couple of years up there uh, north of here uh, near Caldwell, Idaho. I mean Caldwell, Montana. Cardwell, Cardwell, Montana. Um, it was up near where a campsite was, where Lewis and Clark camped. And um, actually where we set up our stage was right where a couple of uh, Lewis and Clark's men uh, walked along the creek. Uh, the Boulder Creek, and uh, it was really kind of neat. The, uh, the mine up there, the gold mine, uh, gave us uh, rights to the land for as long as we were there. And so the play went on for about three or four years, and I just enjoyed the heck out of it. Um, but I took this picture of one of the uh, Blackfoot Indian girls that uh, uh, came and participated in the show, and uh, she was walking her horse. And I think that would be an interesting concept. But one problem, everything's down low. And uh, also it's very gentle. And uh, people like action, so I don't know if I'm going to go that way there. Now, these are two separate horses, two different pictures from two different er uh, sites. But they're almost the same position and the same running position, except for the hind legs which I can just work it out the way I got it here instead of the way it is there. But uh, it's, it's, it's interesting that this, this whole pose is really good. I've got this rear hoof just barely leaving the ground, which makes it uh, so that I can literally have it attached to maybe a rock or something, and that would give me three points of uh, contact. Uh, so, and it also shows the position of the tail, and and all that stuff. So this is this is a good possibility here. Okay, Let's see if I can find the picture. Try to show it to you. I like that positioning, except that neck looks a little narrow and it looks like a different kind of breed of horse. I don't know if it's the right one. Yeah, uh, you see how that horse is positioned? I like that one for just a walking horse. I like the positioning of it. Uh, this is a I think a Crow Indian woman on horseback in the early 1900s. But that's the type of horse that was out west uh, in the 1800s and right up until the 1940s. Uh, a lot of the Indians used the old Mustangs. But I like the leg positioning. I like the way the horse is moving forward. This one's pulling a Travois, which I'm not going to have. But uh, I'm just looking for leg positioning and, and body uh, gesture of the horse. You don't want to do a horse piece and then have it not look like a horse actually moving. Now another reference material I'm going to be using is are a couple three-dimensional uh, horses that I've uh, gotten off the web. Uh, Jeff Wolf is the uh, sculptor who created these uh, this horse and I painted it uh, clay color so I could see the uh, you know take down the white a little bit because the white tends to be too bright and, and you can't really see as much I don't think, as, as you can with duller clay. And on the one, that side is the uh, muscles, and on this side is the uh, the hips and uh, all that stuff. Um, and so I've got all the bone structure, I've got how many ribs and everything anatomically correct. So I can work with that. And it also shows me the muscles and tendons and the legs, which is very important. When you've got drawings of uh, anatomy of a horse, uh, it's a lot 
easier to see shapes if you've got a three-dimensional model in front of you. This is another one by Jeff Wolf, um, showing the muscles in the uh, face of the, the horse as well as the uh, skull on the other side. So uh, anyway, just wanted to show you these two items. So uh, these are going to be references that I'm going to use. I kind of like this one. I think that's what I'm going to do. Is uh, this one? This can be done on a on a, a level uh, piece of ground. And so the problem is the uh, post gets in the way or runs into this uh, rib cage here. And so the way to take care of that. I'm going to carve just a little bit more out. I'd rather have more possibilities than just a minor poss one possibility. So I want to go to ex as extreme as I can without making it look ridiculous. So you can see I cut a nice groove there because I wanted the horse at an angle. Good. <laughs> I'm putting the wing nut on it. Uh, locks it in. A little more coordinated. So this leg is going to be on the ground. This one will be barely on the ground. This one will be on the ground. This one won't be on the ground. So I'll have three points of contact on the base. Yeah. And this leg will be stretched out just a little bit. So I'm going to change the angle of the uh, shoulder and the foreleg a little bit. Draw that out just a little bit. And uh, that's where I'll attach it. That leg. The shoulder I need to drill a hole. Okay. Just a starter hole because uh, yeah, you, you're, you're going to be the point of the screw will be moving all over the board if you don't have a starter hole. Bit of a two inch, much better. You don't want to go through the board because uh, if you're going to be setting this on a counter in a gallery, you don't want to scratch up their wood. All right. Uh, as you can see, I've uh, started the uh, horse armature. I've got it positioned uh, pretty much the way I want it. And uh, the movement looks good. The head uh, positioning and neck looks fine. And uh, all the joints and everything are lined up. Um, I have one problem. This uh, leg needs to come up just a little bit higher, so i got to work on that. Uh, it might mean I have to put an attachment on this board just to bring out the leg just a little bit more. But other than that, it's uh, it's pretty much in the position that's going to be in. Um, I've locked in the uh, everything, so now the uh, armature is really solid, and uh, it ain't going to be moving on me. And that's uh, something you don't want to have it doing while you're working on it, it's having it move on you. So. Anyway, that shows you, uh, you know, how far I got into it, uh, this first segment of my new DVD. Um, and I won't be showing you everything that I do, but I will show you as I advance on the piece itself. And uh, so that you know where I'm at with the uh, DVD. If you want to see how I did everything, uh, you sort of have to look at that DVD, which means you have to buy it. All right, uh, till next uh, time I work on this, uh, see you guys.
wanted to show you my uh, seven DVDs that I have available. Uh, this one's on creating a male bust in clay. Uh, this one is a, a supplemental video called uh, Clay to Bronze. It's a tour of the uh, foundry. And uh, but anyway, I've got uh, sweet grass. I've got uh, a life-size bust. I got a full-size figure of a mountain man and an Indian woman holding a baby. These are the seven that I have. Um, there'll probably be more in the near future. I'm going to be doing one on a horse. But uh, here I'm going to take a break and show you how to purchase these uh, DVDs online. Let's see if I can get it on there. A Day in the Life of a Lemon, block dot blogspot dot com. That's my website. And uh, when you get there, this is the, the home page. And you'll see up here at the top right-hand column, get my thing there's here. a Buy Now t uh, tab right there. And what you do is you just click on this uh, little drop-down menu, and you got all six of my DVDs uh, Mount here. Mask. And then right at the bottom is this Clay to Bronze, which is the uh, Founder Tour. And as you can see, it's uh, not as expensive as the ones above. If you don't understand anything on this page, here's a uh, language uh, thing here. Uh, you just drop this uh, menu down and you can select any language uh, that you speak. We'll get back to the uh, uh, sculpture that I'm working on in progress.